This is real life and, and we're all, we all have our moments. It's hard, it's hard to be a human on this planet right now. And there are many people who are kind of burying their head in the sand and just, you know, going for the zombie thing because it's easier. And one thing that I will say that is my big message right now is the majority of the people on the planet want to live in a generous way. If you can become in any way an inspiration to another human being, that's a victory. This is page 95 in my first book, Inward. And this is a little essay that reads, The inward movement can be summarized as follows. We observe ourselves. We accept what we find without judgment. We let it go. And the actual release causes our transformation. We are already always changing. But when we focus on healing, we can change in the direction of our choosing. These are moments when we intentionally reclaim our power. Every moment we take to know ourselves, we return as someone new. Whatever calms and concentrates the mind causes the purifying release of old burdens that weigh us down. One can be successful with simple inward observation, but when we observe ourselves through proven healing techniques, including different forms of meditation and practices of yoga asanas, among many other things, we ignite the process of change to move at a faster rate. Different techniques reach different levels of the mind. Ultimately, any practice that you feel is challenging but not overwhelming is giving you real results and is giving you real results is the right one for you at the moment. As we progress, we may take on sharper tools for deeper healing. Anything that can heal the subconscious of our mind and create space for love is powerful, enough to completely change our lives. When things get tough, remember that we are not building something small. We are building a palace of peace within our own hearts, and it takes determination and effort to complete something of such beauty and magnitude. Thank you so much. I'm welcoming Young Pueblo to Reality Riffing today on a cold and beautiful afternoon in New York City. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us as uh, both a Dharma poet and a Dharma practitioner. And um, I know many people know you in the realm of a kind of uh, the um, elevation of the space of social media, mm -hmm. um, but also maybe they don't know as much about you in terms of your own uh, Dharma practice and, and your own training of your mind. And so I would love to just kind of dive right into to sure. what that looks like and, and where that has uh, led you and where you continue, where you continue to, um, you know, explore in yourself. Yeah, definitely. That sounds fun. First off, thank you so much for having me here. It's truly an honor to be here in your presence yeah. and um, to be in this amazing space. It really feels um, like we're really vibing high right now. Yeah, we and are. And that's a real joy because it's special in New York City. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, so I meditate Vipassana as taught by SN Goenka, and uh, I took my first course back in July of 2012. So before that, you know, I had no plans whatsoever to be a writer. Um, I always thought that I was going to be sort of like a, more of like an underground revolutionary, like activist, you know, leader and just really trying to still build a better world, but um, on the more materialistic terms. And, you know, I've always been fascinated by liberation. And as I, you know, because I started, I started um, activism when I was about 15 years old. Yeah. And, you know, really understood the external facets of that. But then once I started meditating and um, it just all felt so right, you know, really connecting with that internal dynamic of liberation. And I saw how not only like essential was it, but it was critical to, you know, to our individual freedom and our collective global freedom. So I felt, you know, there were some things that I understood that I had to share with people to sort of help this growing movement of, um, you know, because the world's changing, you know, right? Yeah. There's so many movements happening for that are trying to improve the world. But an essential part of that is our, you know, personal individual liberation, because we need that to develop that peace in our hearts and our minds to be able to have it flow outward into the world. In what... Um what kind of activism were you particularly moved by in your early life? Um, wow, I did this. I was so, you know, a real blessing to be a part of this group called uh, Boston Youth Organizing Project. 
And I got in there when I was 15, and it's sort of a youth-led, adult-supported organization. So the young people were, were literally, you know, deciding everything about the organization. And the adults would take care of the fiscal side of things. And um, we would literally change our schools. You know, if something was missing, we needed more computers. We needed, you know, um, to, like, change around lunches or hours or, like, guidance counselor policies or, you know, we needed the the citywide, because this was based in Boston, the citywide, like, Boston transit, you know, it would close at, like, 8, but we wanted to be extended to, like, 10 p.m., um, just, like, mobilizing all these young people and be like, hey, you know, we're, we're young, but we have a lot of power, and mm. you should listen to us because we're a part of the city, too. So it started off with that and then led into, you know, um, sort of some prison abolition work, some, like, um, housing justice, a bunch of different things, and it really sort of roamed around and got to be a part of a lot of cool things. Interesting. And what, what, you know, in terms of now having become basically gotten the call to yeah. be an activist in a di- different way, yeah. I'm very curious. This is a major conversation I, I just had with a woman named Madame Gandhi. I don't know if you know her work, mm-hmm. but she's an activist in a yeah. kind of a, a, you know, a different space, but also a musician an mm-hmm. artist and an activist. And we spoke a lot on the, this, what does it look like to be an activist in this kind of time that we're in because that's changing and I think especially for those of us who know we have to act first inside of ourselves where how how has that engagement changed for you or how what do you think about in terms of the activism that's happening on the planet and yeah yeah um thank you for asking I I think personally for me I mean um I remember I had to do a big pullback because I was always a part of this world you know I'm I just turned 30 years old uh a few days ago yes and happy birthday thank you <laughs> Sagittarius <laughs> and um I I think for the last like three and a half years as I was cultivating this artistic side of myself I had to pull back you know I, I realized that you know I have been giving a lot to this world and obviously it's yeah. given a lot to me but I there was a part of me that was completely undeveloped and you know different facets of my mind that really needed some serious cultivation, you know, really cultivating my awareness, my equanimity, uh, my ability to love, you know, better. And that took a more insular route where, you know, the past three years I really spent it just, um, you know, honing my craft and just meditating a lot and trying to learn as much about myself and the universe and the world as much as I could, you know, really. Um, And then, but I think, you know, when I talk to people and I tell them about, you know, I like to give them a very simple map of the mind. essentially that you know your ego composes of all the conditioning that you have you know everything that you believe from all the very positive things to the very negative things and it's literally like a cloud that revolves around your consciousness and uh, a lot of our healing work is getting rid of these big knots that are you know really tightened up around our ego and as we release them there is this clarity this um innate flowing love that just flows outward from our consciousness because when the mind is pure it's love and um that love, that purity is able to energize us so deeply that not only are we able to move more, you know, we're able to have more energy to interact with the world more, to be able to pay more attention to the the things that before when I would hear about a calamity on the other side of the world, I would be like, you know, my heart is literally too full right now. I can't even deal with that. Where when you start healing yourself and releasing all of these different aspects of ego, um, you have more energy to interact with things in a much more balanced manner where you know, people might think that detachment is like running away when actually, no, it's actually, you're going to it, straight to it. Yes. And you're able to understand it so deeply that it doesn't cause you misery. Um, so that's why I try to tell people is that, you know, you can be a part of movements and, you know, without that type of exhaustion or having, having a better understanding so that you know when to pull back, when to go in, you know, what you can really do. And also the, the most important part I really feel is, having a new clarity so that you can come up with new creative solutions to these old problems that have been hindering us for so long. Yeah. And I think that's what love really provides is new answers. Yeah. That's a beautiful way of putting it because the fresh, you know, there's a, there's a term Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche used and maybe others uh, called fresh mind that just the, the act of whatever the, the mm-hmm. kind of practices yeah. creates the fresh mind and the fresh heart so that exactly, I mean, really in this time on the planet, we are, it's not just a, it's not just a um, possibility. It's a necessity, necessity. that yeah, y- your generation and the generations younger than you have the kind of ingenious 
genius, resourcefulness, um, and and activism and and kind of sovereignty that will basically um, help to reprogram a, a world in change and in crisis. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think um, I like to talk about the, these hundred years that we're in, you know, that started in the year 2000 and in the year 2100. And we're going to face as a humanity, you know, collectively, the biggest challenges we've ever faced. You know, it's literally going to, you know, reverberate throughout, you know, generations to come. And depending on how we respond to what's happening, you know, can really make for a better world or a worse one. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting sort of seeing like our collective karma come together and just seeing how we respond to it, you know, what we're doing. But I think um, having spaces like this, having different movements, having like all of a sudden so many different techniques that have been around for hundreds of years, you know, or thousands of years, they start appearing on a, on a global stage at the same time when humanity is like most hitting its points of crisis. And like yeah. all these, you know, um, yeah, we have more tools than ever. And a lot of those tools really work. You yes, know, so yes. Fantastic. And in that vein, something I, I like to talk about a lot because I think it's, and I'm sure you um, are come into contact with this quite a bit because of your social media presence and also just your, you know, interaction with your, your the people who love your work, um, and in the wellness space and in the mm -hmm. the kind of space of of your teaching. But there's so much kind of spiritual t tourism and wellness t tourism <laughs> yeah. because of all of these choices. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I I wanted you know I was very curious about your personal practice but um what do you think about kind of the 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 difference between going deep and going wide oh that's so that's that's my favorite i'm so glad you're asking <laughs> um i think it's definitely absolutely appropriate for especially if you're starting off to try different things yeah um but eventually you should pick something yes i think if you really want to you know just really dig deep and within yourself really hit those deep subconscious layers of the mind one the techniques should be giving you results and it should not only be giving you results but it if you look around you and the people who are practicing you also see results in them um and you know it really meets it meets you where you're at that's why i sort of point out like it should be challenging but it shouldn't be overwhelming yeah you know because some things are just not for some people but then right. others you know it's like okay this this feels really right this is hard for me but it, i i can you know stay here i can like, right. keep going in this in this practice but I really advise, and um, you know, I learned that from my teacher, Asen Goenka. He, he says, like, you know, there are so many wonderful techniques out there, but don't just like hop from here to there and there. Yeah. Or like, he uses this analogy of like digging a hole, and you know, you're gonna try to get water, but if you just like dig a little hole there, dig a little hole there, you're never gonna get to the water. So, I would definitely advise people, you know, find something, and then there might come a time in your life where, like, you know, you go 10, 20 years, and then you realize, you know, I need something a little stronger, or something special comes along, you know, for you. I guess sure, but I think commitment in this process is very important. Yeah, yeah. I have to hear here. I have to agree. <laughs> I, you know, because I I do feel like one of the things that's missing in the very you know getting even more uh, loaded and busy space of of wellness and and all of these you know everyone's a shaman, everyone's a ma reiki master, everyone's a, you know everyone's a, I don't know everyone's they, a shaman. Everyone, now. Everyone's everyone, a shaman. which yeah. is the truth. I mean, that's the it's age awesome. that we're in. It's not the it, right. like in one way it is the the like it is the rising of the human kind of um, birthright yeah. and and the really the awakening of that so right, right. in in many ways all of that is very true and at the same time you don't actually at least my experience is that you that I don't actually meet a lot of kind of true practitioners right. um, which is right. one of the reasons I wanted you on the show because I really feel that from you and oh, from your you. art yeah. um, and I feel that that's really the, the, the in my opinion the kind of role models that we can be in this time is 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 comes from that root yeah 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 I think um, it's so it's interesting so I meditate two hours a day uh, a minimum of two hours a day like one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening and you know it changes like depending on what the situation is, um, but it's always two hours. Yeah. And I've been doing that for almost three, almost like two and a half, three years now. Yeah. Um, and that's really sort of what that consistency is was really like propelled me forward. You know, even though I go away to um, a number of you know ten day, twenty day courses a year, um, it it's really the daily practice, the daily like continuance and reconnecting with that, constantly purifying your mind that really pushes you forward on the path. Um, 
but I feel the same way. You know, it's really beautiful to come along and like meet other people who are also doing the same because I don't always tell my audience, you know, I meditate two hours a day. They do know that I go out, you know, I'll like disappear for a while and right. I'm like, okay, I'm gone right. again. Right. And they're, I'm about to disappear for a month yeah. and um, I haven't told them yet, but I tell them, you know, it's a, it's a tough balance. Cause like one, it's like, Oh, I meditate two hours a day. Like, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah, you know, like it's like, no, it's not that. And like, yeah, look at me. Right. But it's not, it's not that it's like, I want to, it's, and it's tricky, right. To deliver it in a proper way where it's like, I want you to know that this is possible. Yeah. This is, this is really the point is like, this isn't at first it may freak you out, but I'm telling you, like, if you really want to like literally build a palace of peace inside yourself, like really purify yourself, really get old, rid of those patterns that have caused you so much misery it's gonna take work you know yeah. like you don't you don't just like you don't just run a marathon you know you got to practice yes and um so yeah it's, a, it's an interesting balance you know like letting them know like what i actually do for myself and not freaking people out but at the same time being like hey like this is the new normal you know like we can do this we can really change our minds 100 percent. i mean i i i always say there's a 24-hour clock and you have to kind of look at like how much time you're spending in the day scurrying around and <laughs> worrying and being neurotic and gossiping yeah. and and fretting and you know mm-hmm. all the things that we're kind of doing um and and then how much time are you going to relegate then to your your peace and harmony and the harmony of your environments and right, internally right. and externally and if you I, I feel like that's like a good way of looking at it because then it's like all right if I'm going to spend eleven hours a day like you know watching Netflix and and <laughs> you know yeah. eating and and working and then I can spend you know a, an hour fifteen minutes thirty minutes two hours towards right. this right. other kind of um, pathway. Definitely. And I think there is a good number of people, too, who a lot of people, you know, and it tends to happen, right? You start taking the spiritual path really seriously. You start meditating and then you become pretty quiet. You know, you just start you really just start going inward. And um, it's been an interesting dynamic seeing how many people, you know, a lot of people when they start and they like immediately become meditation teachers, they had like a tiny taste of meditation. And all of a sudden they're a teacher. Right. And they get really (laughs) excited, which I see. You know, there is a reason to be excited, but I see. You know, I know tons of people, like myself, you know, like, I would never call myself a teacher. I'm just, I'm a poet. I'm writing about these things. I don't teach Vipassana, nothing like that. Yes. You know, um, but I know so many people who've meditated for, like, decades, and they would never call themselves a teacher, you know, so they become very quiet. So it's interesting seeing, like, how... There's just, you know, there's more of us than we think who are very serious about these, you know, traditions and just yes. going going far inward. And it's, I have this thing that, you know, really stuck with me. A friend of mine who's, you know, really progressing forward on the path has made um, great strides. And he told me, you know, I was asking him for a bit of advice and he was like, you know, Diego, you should meditate when you want to meditate and you should meditate when you don't want to meditate. And that is so mm. simple, Wise but, it, words. but it really crushed me. Wise you know? words. It got me good because I, yeah. I've been feeling in myself like, you know, I have some more time, you know, I'm a writer and I can really, you know, do things the way I want to do them. And I like feel inside me this sort of calling to, you know, meditate a little more. Why don't you get another like 30 minutes in there, another like hour when you have the time. And um, it's been really interesting, you know, for us who already do this work to just kind of take the plunge even deeper. It really is. I feel that myself that there's, you know, the, the, there's the business aspect and the yeah. demands of, of, of kind of um, what we're being asked to do by right. what I would call our dharmic kind of, right. you know, de- whatever, yeah. whatever the thing is, the, the life is asking of us. So there's all of these demands and I'm sure, you know, people who have children and, you know, there's so many right. different demands right. of us. So to show up in um, ways that we may want to or we may not want to, <laughs> but there's... And, um, in one way I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this resonates with you, but I'm definitely skirting with the idea of like, what is the difference between the dharmic meditative creative space of writing a poem that's going to touch, you know, many, many, many people or, meditating for 15 minute minutes more and oh, and and yeah. what you know like in right. that and that in right. that dance because yeah. it is a dance because on either end of it there's you know there there's um implications because we live on a polarity totally, planet totally that's really interesting one thing that stuck with me um that my teacher said and it, it just hit home with me and he said the most wholesome the most wholesome action that we could take literally you know you can translate that to the best karma that you can receive is 
the purification of the mind. You know, so I definitely put that as my, my personal, I mean, right now in this moment, I definitely put that as my personal first. It's like, you know, whatever may happen in the day, like may chaos break out, it's always going to be the two hours a day. And um, because without it, you know, everything stops flowing. Like I'm just going to, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, all the like patterns will start growing again. And it's really like, you know, you're, you're essentially fighting all these vines that are growing in your mind and trying to cut them down. Yeah. Um, but yeah i mean for me it just it really comes first and like you know and sometimes you know that i won't i won't write for like a week or two and i just like won't have anything to say and and it's fine you know it's sort of like now that that's the challenge like live with that what if you never write again cool you know like right and um right but it, it's 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 been quite a journey i know personally for me it's just um it's been an awesome ride trying to balance this and trying to maintain my morality and also like you know, understanding that, okay, Young Pueblo has become this, like, brand and, right. you know, this huge thing. So how can I do this morally, you know, without harming people, being as fair as possible, yeah. being as kind as I can be and not allowing it to, like, blow my ego up, you know, right. or, like, feeling the times when I'm like, oh, okay, wait, a lot more people recognize me. That's really interesting. That's very different from before. And, you know, sort of feeling that, like, two-sidedness of things and yeah. then being like, okay, well, now I get to pick which one do I really want to be a part of, like, well, I actually rather cultivate my non-identity than, like, you know, allow my, like, I, this idea of Diego and Young Pueblo to continue flourishing, you know, and which has been a very interesting thing. So it's, like, while I'm, like, really going into, like, you know, the nothingness of my identity, this, like, Young Pueblo is, like, becoming, you know, Yeah, you have to, like, talk dominant. about yourself in the third person all the time. <laughs> yeah. I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but... yeah. I mean, in some way, like the, uh, my teacher said this to me and it was very helpful because yeah. I do feel that there's turbulence in the atmosphere around this, um, for myself. And I, I no, feel, totally, I feel totally. you. Yeah. Um, he said when Amon was asked about living with David Bowie, like, what's it like to live with David Bowie? Yeah. Some reporter asked yeah. her and she was like, what do you mean? Davy Jones? <laughs> which was his his uh, his real name and um you know for her her point was like look you know i live with david jones david bowie is a is a it's like a character it's yeah. a character yeah. and um i i felt that that was very that that helped me a lot with this yeah. particular thing because it's that's like that's really helpful it yeah. is no and it's interesting because in the same way like right like young pueblo is definitely like a part of me it comes out of my struggles it's like um it's sort of my, you know, yeah, that's like the voice that carries my artistic endeavors and my growth. You know, a lot of the big chunk of the things that I've understood through my personal purification. Um, but, you know, do you know Deepama? Deepama, she was a saint. Um, she reached like a really high level of enlightenment. She passed away in 1980s. She was, she was one of the teachers of uh, like Sharon Salzberg and um, okay Sen I don't I'm so not familiar she's, she's dope she's okay. real special like, cool. you should definitely read her book but um there was one story in her book that I read recently where she her young grandson um took robes and um uh, back in India and then he came to his grandmother to Deepama and was like you know people are bowing to me now like what do I do about that and she just smiled at him and she was and she told him just understand that they're not bowing to you, they're bowing to the robes. And I feel like that really helped me sort of, you know, it's, you know, when people tell me that's great, you know, what you do is great. You know, one, I think it's good. I think it's really nice that people can be so open to give love like that. That's a really yeah. good sign, a yeah. sign of progress for them. It you is. know, because a lot yeah. of people can't give love well, can't receive love, and that, that blockage is there. Yeah. So one is like, sure, you know, but I'm understanding that what they're appreciating is the work itself, which is a little bit, you know, it's a, it's come out of me, but it's not me. Yes. You know, you're appreciating the work, which is like, you know, great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Sort of, you know, having that understanding, you know, cause how can it really be mine if I don't exist? Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a complicated question. <laughs> 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 we need to call a trademark a lawyer. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Um, how much is uh, your your writing, like, does a l how much would you say comes out of an actual meditative state, or do you feel that the just the meditative, post-meditative state is, again, Trinkba calls, there's two states. It's meditative uh -huh. and post-meditative. 
meditative. Yeah, you're either yeah, meditating yeah. or you're in post meditation. Right, right. Um, but how much would you feel is like actually like you, w- when you're finished meditating, you write a poem or you're just kind of like, what's your creative process like these oh, days? Oh, it's interesting. So it ch- it's changed a lot. Um, sometimes a lot of it was written, you know, just when I would wake up in the morning, you know, the mind would right. feel really fresh. And before I would even go to meditate and I would write some stuff down. Um, a lot of it, so there are definitely times when things pop up in my head when I'm meditating and yeah. that's sort of against what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. <laughs> I'm supposed Thinking. To, yeah. I'm like supposed to be like, you know, yeah. focusing on the practice, observing right. the sensations properly. Right. But, um, but then, you know, and definitely at first, like, to be honest, like I was definitely naughty and like, would like, be like, Oh, let me just take a little break and like write something down. Right. Um, but I definitely saw the drawbacks in that. And, um, have become a lot more serious about it. So I, you know, understand it more from the Buddha, the, the, when the Buddha would describe it, he'd say, you know, first purify the mind and then you can properly investigate. Yeah. And, um, and to me it's like, oh, so when I, a topic comes into mind and I start writing about it and I'm like, oh, like that's, you know, it makes a lot more sense than it would have before or right. like after like a certain degree of like of meditating deeper and deeper or like X number of courses or, you know, having had like a year or two, like after practicing for a while, things make a lot more sense. And then other times, you know, I'll turn my attention to an idea and be like, okay, let me see what's there. We'll try to break it down. But, um, but really the best, and I think the, the things that have really affected people very deeply are these like random things that just fly into my head while right. I'm like hanging out, walking right. or talking to people or, you know, literally just like moving about in the city or in my home. And then it's like, boom, there it is. And I'm like, yeah. okay, let me, t- let me note that down. Yeah. 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 But. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's um, the way that the life speaks to you, mm-hmm. I think, is a, it, it is um, kind of an ever mysterious experience. Yeah, you know, I try not to think too much about where it's coming from. More so, like, I focus, like, there's so many, you know, so many things to figure out. The universe is so vast, you know, and also what's beyond the universe. You know, there's there's so much. But, um but it's been funny seeing how different people understand it in different ways. Um, one time I was hanging out with, you know, uh, Elena Brower. Yeah. So she's awesome. So I'm yeah. um, a good friend and I was hanging out with her and we had, this was the first time we met and she was like, you know, she was sort of like really inquisitive was like, so where's all this stuff coming from? And I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm just meditating and it just, you know, will pop into, into my head. And she was like, Oh, so it all comes from the Godhead, you know, the Godhead. And that was like her understanding of it. And mm. then other people, you know, similar things where, it's like everyone's understanding it from their own perspective. So I'm enjoying sort of, you know, creating a writing that is sort of like universal in its like um, approach. And it's not like I'm, I'm purposely trying to make it non alienating. So, you know, I don't even use the word like spirituality in my writing, even though it's no. like it's a very spiritual thing. Right. But, but I do that so that people can approach it and, you know, not because like people, when they hear these particular words, like some people will so be so deeply turned off by the idea or the word soul or the or the word like frequency or vibration or you know any of these like more terms that are more common right right. um that to me it was like oh let me task myself a difficult you know thing to try to just explain these ideas without using these words or explain um you know something that people can really develop a deeper understanding of themselves and without like hearing this terminology that might put them away from it and Mm. it's been quite interesting so having like um all these like psychologists and um you know people who are like uh, uh marriage family therapists or you know people in the world of like sociology or social justice and and they will all look at my writing and then they'll understand it as their own They'll be right. like, oh, wow, you're like one of, or you're like a philosopher. Right. Or you're right. like, you know, right. this and that. Right. And I'm like, perfect. You know, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly what we wanted. It was like, you know, don't even think about this in spiritual terms. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just consider that human evolution is possible. Yes. You know, let's, let's think about this universally. So yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that is also one of the, what I think is so profound about the, the different, you know, um, inspirations and pieces and poems, whatever, you know, I guess we're calling them poems. And, yeah, and, yeah. You know, they're, they're <laughs> all, the, all these little, yeah. you know, <laughs> treasures, um, is that anybody could read that anyone, 
at any kind of phase or stage in their development, their chronology, their mm-hmm. ethnicity, their socio yeah. socioeconomic. I mean, really, it, there there is um, there is kind of no barrier to entry, and I think that's also what I would you know, my projection onto your work um, would be that that's where you know so many can receive yeah. from, but the yeah. simplicity of it. Totally, and I think that's definitely been the goal, and. You know, we'll see how next year goes. And, like, it may not always be like that, you know. I have have no idea what's going to happen as I progress forward in my own path. And um, I think that's why, you know, I always say, you know, I'm a meditator first. Like, I'm not a meditation teacher or anything. I'm just a meditator. Yeah. And and then comes writer and then comes speaker. And so we'll see where, like, you know, the leader meditator will take the rest of the situation. Because I have no idea what my own evolution is going to hold. Like, when I go into these courses... You know, I'm there just to dissolve as much of my ego as possible. And then when I come out, you know, who knows what's, you know, it's going to be different. It will be yeah. different. And how was uh, your first book, Inward, just came out recently, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it yeah, came out fall, uh, right? November 9th. November yeah. 9th, yeah. Um, and you did you self-publish this book? Yes, yes. I, um, I self-published. I recently just committed with um, uh, Andrews McMeal. The same people who published Rupi Kaur and Langlave and a bunch of other really yes. great poets. Yes. Um, so the the book's going to be released again, um, September 2018. Uh, okay. Like it's essentially the same version, just a revised version. Yeah. And um and it's going to be like in bookstores everywhere. But right now it's just on Amazon. But I really wanted to, and that was my plan was to self publish so that what's speaking and what's the message that is being given is something that's really just coming from, yeah. you know, not even me, but just like this, this investigation that I'm doing, yeah. um, this, this sort of like personal evolution that's happening. And, um, you know, I always thought that one was like, if I just write this manuscript and then try to give it to an editor, they're going to be like, you're crazy. You know, right. this isn't going to work. Right. And, yeah. and um, so to me it was like, okay, you know, like, don't worry about the institutions. Let me just, see if this connects with the people the people like it you know then the institutions will come later or we may not even need them to come you know let's just focus on that and um and it's been wonderful because like i always felt uncomfortable like if you know if an idea i had in my head was like what if an editor comes to me and they're like yeah but are you sure this is what freedom really means and i'm gonna be like Come on, dude. Like I made some edits here on um, your freedom. <laughs> I redlined your freedom here. <laughs> like, and I'm like, no, nah, it's not going to work because then it's going to take away from like what we're trying to do. So, but I did have some amazing people, you know, check my grammar and, you know, um, friends and family who've really helped, you know, just sort of help me explain myself a little better, not be too repetitive and all of that. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been awesome just seeing that the actual, you know, what we've produced um, is helping a lot of people already, you know, so it's been, it's, it's been such really cool. a, it, it is such a beautiful, like just, I love the everything, the vibration of it is very like, thank you. That means a lot coming from it, you. It's useful. You know, you can just yeah. feel that like, this is something I can open and it's going to, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it has the seeds of many important things. You can feel it. So, and, um, congratulations on the formal publishing, but I, I have a feeling that you don't really necessarily <laughs> need that, you know what I mean? Because yeah, you yeah. really are growing a movement and I'm curious just, um, in terms of that relationship with social media and how that, what, what's your relationship with all of that? I mean, I know it's, it's, it's an interesting relationship, especially yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit, um, one, I think I like what you said earlier, you know, so I feel like this is like a karmic task that I have to fill out. I didn't, I wasn't intending for this to happen. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was never, yeah, this, I just didn't know this was going to happen. And then I knew this was, um, you know, I had to start sharing what I understood, but then all of a sudden, you know, just like people are like really gravitating towards it. And, you know, I definitely respect that, but it's definitely interesting sort of navigating it, navigating my own path and, you know, having to like post daily and yes. like really just like feed, feed, constant feed the monster yeah. <laughs> and like constantly connect with people. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough a little bit sometimes. Cause you know, I get, I get a lot of messages. I can't respond to all of them. And, you know, people sometimes like really pour their heart out and, or they ask questions that I just don't have answers to, you know, it's like, I already 
I get, I got, gave you what I know. That's, that's right, what I got. You right. Know? Right. <laughs> and, and also just reminding them like, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm not yeah. enlightened. I've never claimed to be enlightened. Yes. Nothing like that. You yes. know, I'm on the path of definitely, um, you know, made some progress with my own, you know, I used to have, you know, just have such heavy depression and, you know, all these, um, serious patterns that have were really burdening my life that I've released, you know, yeah. and I still feel anxiety. I still feel sadness, you know, sure. they yeah. still come up, but, um, but just, sort of navigating this world that, you know, has definitely, you know, helped change my life and help sort of focus it all that this is something that I should be doing. And it is um, a good way to give back because I see, you know, people let me know how much it helps them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the same time, you know, I also, I mean, um, I did a podcast with Luke Story and it was a little weird. He asked me, you know, what what's like my real goal? And I was like, well, to, you know, like have a a nice little house and a garden and to be able to just meditate all yeah. the time without anybody <laughs> bothering me, <laughs> you know, just like totally shut all that stuff down. But like yeah. that, that day will come, you know, I'll definitely, I, I strictly, very strictly follow my intuition. And, um, when that day comes, I'll know, and, and then I'll know it's time to like, you know, hit it in high gear and let's, uh, let's do our best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I would just say to that, like the times, ha the the, team, the times are changing very, very quickly. And I do feel like um, even some of the greatest spiritual teachers, including, you know, Jesus, the yogi, um, mm -hmm. all of these Rinpoches, the Dalai Lama himself, though his sadhana is extensive, um, he knows that he has to engage with the, the world in a way that's also extensive because of the times we live in. So um before you disappear altogether <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, do you have the same feeling i feel like you know you're you're giving you're giving so much i know you're like a big presence in people's lives um but what about you know for your own progression like do you imagine like a time or do you give yourself time just out of my own career can i even ask you questions yeah you can or, yeah <laughs> um well i 100 percent give myself time and i spend i spend more time in the day doing some sort of meditative um, technology or practice in, you know, whether it's the classic or maybe just a recitation of mantra or whatever, yeah, yeah. then I spend doing other things, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I really feel that, um, in this incarnation, I am here to engage as a Western woman cool. with the Western yeah model of engagement from yeah, social yeah. media to entrepreneurship to yeah. all of these. And so, um, I'm, uh, my goal is certainly not to go into a, not like a, you know, long-term retreat, maybe, yeah. maybe smaller retreats, but, yeah. um, which would be very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and that has been a little less of the, but also I'm a woman, you know, and I want to have a child and like, there's, there's a householder kind of thing yeah, yeah. for sure. That's, yeah. and also Kundalini yoga is a householder tradition. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. So it, there is, you know, there's that, which I feel like, I don't know. I don't know Gwenka's, um teachings extensively, mm -hmm. but I also feel that he was, um, he encouraged householder. Absolutely. Um, the Vipassana that we, our tradition, you know, by, you know, came, so like we really refer to it as the Sayaji Ubaken tradition, which is Gwenka's teacher. And um, it's sort of the idea of like these, you know, great householders and them, you know, sort of opening up this path of enlightenment again because during the buddhist time you know there were so many householders who entered the different stages of enlightenment and um that was lost for a while but then it sort of reopened up in burma and um moving that forward and sort of bringing it in mass to the people and um and yeah it's like very encouraged and it, it lets you know that sure like enlightenment is you know it's difficult it's like it's you have to put in a lot of work yeah but if you want to you can do it and um and as a householder you're not excluded from that you can yes. you can absolutely you know um attain the fruit without having to be a monk but what's interesting is that the technique is good enough um, strong enough that monks sometimes do meditate with us. So you'll, you know, you'll, we'll meditate and then there'll be monks there who are, you know, going ham with us, you know, going, and right. I, I like the term ham going hard as a monk. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> we have some laughter from our studio, studio audience on that one. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I love it, you know, and like, we'll just, I'll be going ham in there, just putting in our best. And, yeah. um, but yeah, it's definitely a householder tradition and we're all doing our best and it's nice to like hear from other people who've been meditating for decades and, and I have this one friend of mine who, you know, she has these two little beautiful daughters and 
she says whenever she does her evening sits, like her daughters will come and they'll sit yes. with her. And one, yes. of, one of her daughters can only sit with her for like 15 minutes and the other one for like 30 minutes. And, and then, you know, she'll like finish her hour. But it's just so, you know, the beauty in that to me, it's just magnanimous. It's, yeah. it's beautiful to have like a very profound family and to have that deep connection and to be able to give your family members a gift that is priceless you yeah. know it's like here this is for your liberation yeah not just for like this one life like may it flow with you forward until you're fully liberated yeah beautiful well thank you so 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 much for being here it's so beautiful to talk to you and um how do people find you what what you know obviously you absolutely should buy <laughs> inward on amazon it's called inward um, and so that's available. And then your um, social media handle is yeah, it's um, Young Pueblo uh, Y U N G underscore P U E B L O. And um, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I, I think I'm on Twitter and Facebook too. But um, you're gonna get you're gonna get the best stuff on Instagram for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And how about just the last thing? Um, what poets are are your great inspirations? We were at the New York and Poet Cafe last night, oh, and cool. it was just so nice to be there. I've been yeah. there in so long, and just felt like like uh, you know, I just loved you know, give a hand for that poet, give a hand for that poet. And I was <laughs> like, you know, every, everybody's a poet. Yeah, you know, it was just yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely um, I'm also a poet, um, and inspired by. I was just inspired last night by that just the environment of that but who who are you who are your inspirations your um, poet inspirations I think for like um, for modern classics I think definitely you know he might be I think he's definitely written poetry but Herman Hess I mean he just he just opened the game up for me you know yes. when I started reading him I was like I couldn't even believe like reading Siddhartha reading Narcissus and Goldman which I think is his best book it's just so beautiful that it just blows my mind and then, you know, like Khalil Gibran, fantastic, so beautiful, classic. Um, and then I also, there's a lot of new poets, you know, that are out there, like Instagram yeah. poets that I'm yeah. love. And, you know, like I love Ruby Cower, love Lang Lave. And then the up and coming ones like um, Leila Delia, Liana Naima, um, Sid Long, um, my, my friend Chris Ferreira. So, like, there's like tons of people who are just really pouring it out. Yeah. And, and I also, you know, and not just like the wisdom poetry, but just like poetry of raw emotion. You know, yeah. this is like, this is my pain. Here it yeah. is, you know. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's really what beautiful. they were slamming last night. Some yeah. amazing, kind of just <laughs> uh, amazing, you know, slam poetry that is, is, you know, I wouldn't particularly put it in the, like a Dharma poetic right, space. Right. It's a, but yeah. it's certainly um, of the, the, you know, the power and the strength of the human spirit. Right, so why right. wouldn't it be, you know, human resilience, like yeah. you keep living, you know, you keep going. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. My friend. Yeah. Thank you. I'm thank so glad you we're friends so now. Much. I know yeah. what a pleasure. Yeah. A real, a real joy for me too. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs>